Cause it's time for our faith to be tested. But I know that in the middle of that fire, God's gonna show up with me. Yes, he is, he yes, he is, he yes, he is. I know God's gonna walk with me. I know God's gonna climb with me. I know God's gonna take territory. Let the 
body of Christ begin to minister. Let the body of Christ begin to minister. Be healed and delivered. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Come on. If this is what you choose, get in the middle of it. If this is what you choose, get in the middle of it. Don't watch it happen. Help make it happen. Don't watch a move of God. Help move in the presence of God. Close your eyes and lift your hands. The Holy Ghost is about to touch you right where you are. Close your eyes, lift your hands, and let your voice out. Jesus, move in this place right now. Jesus! There it is. Come on, step across the line. Woo! Hey! Hey! Are you open to what God has for you? 
Are you open to what God has for you? Come on, it's time to get on the same page in the spirit in your home. It's time to get on the same page in the spirit in your home. It's time to get in the same page of the Spirit. He that hath an ear, let him hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Come on, the Lord is speaking to you right now. Oh, you've been so good to me, Lord. Oh, there's still people in the spirit right now. Don't let's not rush. Let the Holy Ghost flow through you. Go ahead. Let those tears flow down your face. Let those tears flow down your face. I see some new things happening right now. 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 Be healed in your body right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Be whole in your body. Be whole in your body. Jesus. We're about to move on, but I don't want to move before the Holy Ghost is done. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you have the Holy Ghost, why don't you let that spirit loosen you for a moment? name in Jesus name the Holy Ghost is still moving from the front to the back no music just our voices talking to him talk to him talk to him no one can talk to him like you talk to him add your voice Jesus 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 let that flow, Jesus. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lord. Mighty is he. Thank you, Jesus. 
Kila la la baharan la marasi. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Could you get your hands up in the air? I do believe I'm going to preach in just a moment, but could you just tell the Lord you are open, that you are open to what he wants to speak to you? Tell the Lord you're open. God, we are open to what you want to do in Souls Harbor. God, not just in one campus, Lord, but in Souls Harbor as a whole. Lord, we want your will. I am desperate for your will. God, I want to be led by the Spirit. God, I can tell you are doing something right now. God, and I am open to what you want. God, let all of our plans go on the back burner. God, we decrease so you can increase. Lord, let your glory be made manifest in this house. Let this be a night that is remembered forever in the hearts and minds. God, of this church leadership team, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am not stopping anything, but I am going to ask if you're able to, to make your way back towards your seat. And we are going to continue to flow in this vein of the Spirit. Please don't just turn the off uh, switch on your Holy Ghost button. Just flow. Flow in the Spirit. Shake someone's hand on your way back towards your seat and tell them Jesus loves you. Mean it. Let them know Jesus has a plan for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move very quickly for time's sake. I'm going to direct your attention to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 11 and 13. And then Psalm 107. Verses 23 through 25 and verse 30. I'm going to read these two passages of scripture. And then we're going to launch into this. And as you are turning and preparing to read the word, thank you to Pastor Jason, Sister Holly, Bishop, and Sister Varnum for the sacrifices to get us to where we're at here tonight. There are conferences that wish they could experience what we just experienced right now. And that doesn't happen by accident. The Holy Ghost shows up where he's invited. The Spirit of the Lord abides here because the ground has been tilled. The atmosphere has been prepared by my elders. And I love them and appreciate them. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 11 and 13. If you want to stand, you are more than welcome to. If you would like to sit, you are more than welcome to rest your legs. This is what it says in verse 11. These are the events surrounding Elijah. And Elisha's transition of ministry and mantle. Verse 11 says, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Verse 13, and Elisha took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Psalm 107, verses 23 through 25, and then verse 30. If this sounds familiar, this is some of what I was preaching at Touch the Future. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters. That's what I want. I ain't staying in the kiddie pools. Those that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. That's what we want. We'll get there in a minute. Verse 25. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. Verse 30. Then are they glad because they be quiet, so he bringeth them unto their desired haven. And tonight... I want to talk to you for a little while about the wonder and the whirlwind. The wonder and the whirlwind, and this is not a sermon. Uh, I've tried to make it as much of a good message as I can, and this is really what I feel is a word for Souls Harbor. I don't mean just Dunellen, and I'm not talking about Bellevue. This has been in my spirit for about a year now. Uh, I have not felt to release it until now, and... Maybe it's not for you. Just be like a good hypocrite and fake it and nod your head like I'm blessing you and helping you. <laughs> but I believe I'm going to speak to the corporate body of Souls Harbor tonight. 
And maybe it won't make any sense to you, but this is what I feel. Because God is doing something great right now. The winds of the Spirit are blowing in this church. And we are on the verge of something very special. And the Lord is trying to take us somewhere if we will let him. And so I've asked our bishop, I want him to open in prayer and just pray over us, pray over me, pray over our future in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, the name above every name to which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let your name spread through the earth. And I pray for souls harbor at large. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would let every influence of Souls Harbor bring great revival to every place in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, Bellevue, Donellan, and Dade City, and others beyond, I pray in the name of Jesus, supply every need. Ho, oh, deliver and lift up and save to the uttermost. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let this word come through clear, let our hearts be open. Let the word settle in our heart and bring forth fruit in Jesus' name. Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord, not just out of ritual, but why don't you thank God for his excellent greatness? Why don't you thank the Lord for what he is doing in this church? Why don't you thank the Lord for what he's doing in your family? He's brought us a mighty long way. He's been good to me. I can't sit on my praise. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. The wonder and the whirlwind. And if you'll allow me, I'm going to just, I want to take a few minutes right now. And I just want to testify about what God is doing throughout Souls Harbor right now. First of all, I'll start with Dunellen in my home front right now. Today marks mine and Lacey's sixth pastoral anniversary. And it's just as much hers, if not more of hers than mine. Powerful woman of God. And it's Souls Harbor's seventh year in the city of Dunellen. And it's Souls Harbor's seventh year of multi-campus, multiple location revival. No longer just one location, honey. Hallelujah. And I can say it's an honor to work for God. In Dunellen, we now average over 110 every Sunday morning. We had 118 there this morning. Don't tell anyone, but we had a black market service in the new building this morning. Don't tell the county or anything like that, Brother Chad, but we had church in there this morning. We've already had two people get the Holy Ghost in that new building. We ain't got a CO from the government, but we got a stamp of approval from the Lord God Almighty. We're in revival. The church is growing. We have broke our attendance record this year. We have had 210 on our friend day this year in Dunellen. And we are poised in two short months to enter into a new sanctuary that will seat over 250 people on a property that's 4.77 acres that has 20,000 square feet within that campus right there. And praise be to the one true and living God, a property that's valued over $1.5 million, doesn't have a note, doesn't have a mortgage. It's debt-free to the glory of God. To the glory of God. Look what the Lord is doing. Souls Harbor, we're in revival. And that's us. I want you to say that. Say, that's us. Dade City. Where are you at, Dade City? Give me a whoop, whoop. Why don't y'all help me out? Brother Trace, why don't you come up here and represent Dunellen since I'm preaching right now. Dade City, Brother Cade, wherever you're at, come up here right now. I know Brother Donnie's on vacation. He's on the power surge. Where's some of the, give me somebody from Dade City right now. Brother Ellis, Brother Teddy, both y'all come up here. Come sit over there for me. Dade City has been a campus, what is it now, Bishop, Sister Varnum, three years? 
going on going into our fourth year somewhere around that and they are knocking on the 100 barrier in their attendance great growth numerically but not just numbers honey spiritually I have preached there several times this year and the power of God is working in those services brother Cade sent me a video of the prayer meeting in the prayer room and you could feel the glory of God through that video God is moving God is working that property is paid off ain't no note ain't no mortgage on that place and it won't be too long that we'll be scratching our heads saying where do we go from here where are we moving from here? That's revival and that's us. Why don't you say that? Say that's us. Look at what's happening in the Spanish campus. Gloria, brother Ishmael's already up here. Mi hermano. Where's brother Freitas, sister Freitas? Y'all come up. Join me up here. Anybody else? Sister Lacey, you want to come up from Donellan? Come on up. Whoever wants to. It's it's a party time. Come on. Mi hermano. Vamanos? No, that would mean let's go. That's not quite. I'm, I'm trying. Spanish campus. Powerful services. They broke their attendance record. 72 Hispanics in attendance. Way more than 10 being baptized in Jesus' name. Filled with the Holy Ghost. They're packing out the student center. And they need this Bellevue campus to get out of here already so they can start having services on Sunday. Come on, y'all. We're going to have to get that money flowing in because revival is not, it's not coming. It's here right now. And it's waiting on us to get out of the way. Oh, hallelujah. Souls Harbor in Espanol is on the radio every week. My word, that's us. That's us. Death Church. Brother Chad, what you doing sitting out there? Come on up here. Whoever you want, tell them to get up here. That's right. I don't know who else deaf. Death Church is on fire. What was it? Did eight get baptized during this is that? And another one today. They've had at least 11 baptized in Jesus' name. People are receiving the Holy Ghost. They've had up to 24 deaf people in one service. That's a huge deal, y'all. I would dare say that's the biggest deaf church in Marion County. My word, it's blowing up. <laughs> Power of God flowing freely. That's us. How do I say that in, in sign language? Say that's us. That's us. Let's try that. Bring, come, bring it up here. Come on. No, I don't have it back there. Come on. That's us. Do it. That's us. How do I say that's us in Espanol? Somos nosotros. Say it again. Somos nosotros. Somos nosotros. That's us. That's us. That's us. That's us. And Bellevue campus is continuing to be a beacon of light, revival, and anointing. Blessing churches, ministries, and pastors all around the world. Brother Noah sent me a great report about the youth department. All of the wonderful things that have transpired. Kids getting the Holy Ghost. Kids receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Being baptized in Jesus' name. They are continued. They are continuing to fan the flames of future revival fire for this church. The kids department and the youth department department are stoking the fire for our next five campuses every Sunday. Oh! Brother Madison said we've had almost 1,800 Bible studies taught this year alone. We've had 300 first-time guests this year alone. 
just between Easter and Independence Day, there were thousands and thousands of guests on this site right here. You heard the report from Brother Donald Curry. We are preparing for a sanctuary that will seat how many, Pastor? First phase, 1,500. Small potatoes. First phase, 1,500. And there's already $1.7 million in the bank. During this is that, one backslider reported deliverance. Three reports of miraculous healing. At least five first-timers receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And 21 being baptized in the name of Jesus. That's us. That's us. That's us. And I know I've listed off a bunch of good things. And I'm thankful for what the Lord has done. It's great. It's wonderful. And I know we're preparing for a new building dedication in Dunellen and soon a groundbreaking ceremony in Bellevue and who knows what else. But I'm here to tell you, I know it's good, but the best really is yet to come. I feel like reminding somebody what Jesus said in John 14. Greater works than these shall ye do. Jesus was saying, I'm about to head back up into heaven, y'all, but ain't nothing to worry about. Don't put it on cruise control because if you think this is good, it's about to be great. And Souls Harbor, if you think it's been great so far, God is about to blow our minds. We are going to see more miracles, more conversions, more deliverances, more Bible studies, more campuses. Somebody ought to run a lap right now. Where you at, boys? Run. I claim it with every step. Yeah. Come on, the church is going to do greater works. We're going to go to greater heights. Oh. That's what the prophecy says. Haggai 2 9. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord. Not Daniel Autry, not Brother Ishmael, not Pastor Varnum. It's not, oh no, this is what the Lord says. This thing's about to blow up. This thing's about to be insane off the charts. What God is wanting to accomplish in these last hours. The Lord is shaking the nations. The Lord is, oh my word, I feel malabashata. There is such an anointing here. And I'm here to tell Souls Harbor, I've been feeling the gifts of the Spirit so much here lately. And it's time for some of you to wake it up. And it's time to get with it because the gifts of the Spirit are flowing through this church. And we need you to start prophesying. We need you to start speaking in other tongues. We need you to interpret that. We need you to have the gift of wisdom. We need you to start speaking things. Come on. Oh. This thing's getting bigger, Brother Ishmael. We're just only getting started, Brother Ellis. Brother Trace, it's small potatoes, that building in Dunellen. God, help me to not be satisfied with some little, with some little happy meal version of a God-sized promise. Bills are paid. We ain't got no debt. We're comfortable. No! We're going to reach. We're going to push. We're going to evangelize. We're going to occupy. We're going to do whatever it takes. Throw your hands in the air. Speak with other tongues. Lay hands on one another. Come on, deaf folks. Come on, Spanish church. Come on, Dade City campus. Yeah, backslider, you in the house, you as well. Start prophesying. Ha! That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah.
Sila la la maharanda masi. Oh, ah. You, you can be seated or stand. That's fine. La mata ya la mashata ya rasi. Woo! Sita ya la 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 bata ya la la marasi. Oh, it would be so easy for me to stop right there. It'd be so easy for us to stop right there. I, I like to shout. I feel like I've got a word for somebody here. I know. I got a word for us leaders here. Hallelujah. Go to Psalm 107 with me. Those that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and the wonders in his deep, in the deep. Hallelujah. I believe that is smack dab exactly. I feel like I can speak for Brother Ishmael and Brother Donnie. And the Ellis's, and Dade City, and Dunellen. I feel like I can see the pastoral family of Souls Harbor in these scriptures. That's what we want. That's what we're about. We want miracle signs and wonders. We want to do business in great waters. I don't want man-made business. I want spiritual business. I want to just wade down into the deep. I ain't just going to listen to a book. I'm not just going to get it from a book. I'm going to get it from the book and more importantly, even the spirit. We're wading deeper. We're going deeper. We desire to go into those ships to load up and do business in great waters. Souls Harbor, we are poised for such a revival. I'm not talking about three, four, five campuses. My Lord. The hand of God is upon us. Oh, you look at the landscape of our ministers. We got young men like Brother Noah, Brother Madison, Brother Noah, so many others. I know I could go through a list here and mention them. But just 19 and 20 years old and preaching the paint off the walls. That's not because they're hot stuff. That ain't nothing to do with them. It's the hand of God. It's the favor of the Lord. And as long as you'll remember that, buddy, we're going to go deeper, Madison. We're going to go deeper, Luke. We got young ladies here. We got ministers all over this house poised to take this church beyond what anyone could imagine. I ain't just puffing you up. I'm here to tell you we are on the verge of something so spectacular. Yawn your way through this if you want to. But I know I got some people in the boat with me. I know I got some people in the boat with me. Why don't you just wave with me if you say, I want that. Look across this place. I don't care what other churches are doing. We don't care what other churches are saying. I don't care their format, their business model. I want book of Acts. I want miracle signs and wonders. I want apostolic authority. I want My God, I feel it. I feel it in this place right now. You came for ordinary Sunday night. You go ahead and leave. Go to Pizza Hut. There is a touch of destiny here. God is transforming us. God is preparing us. And we're about to go into some deeper waters. We're going to see the works of the Lord. We're going to see his wonders in the deep. We're going to see miraculous things. I want you to hear me though. Stand or sit, come to the altar, that's fine. That's the desired future. That is the divine intent. That's the promise. But I want to help somebody with the pathway. With that process to get there because the fact is I can almost guarantee don't raise your hands now just keep them down let's all act like we got it all together I can guarantee this house is full of trouble You're like not me I'm perfect okay I'll raise an extra hand for you
There are people in this place, ministers, pastors, that are dealing with uncertainty, storms, members and ministers, hear me, that you've been feeling agitated. Here's the word, people of God, frustrated. I've come with a word for someone here tonight. A lot of someones. Frustrated with all this promise. <laughs> Future is bright. All this good stuff happening, but there's an agitation in the water. A little trouble in the water. A little uncertainty about the future. The plan of God is being revealed, but frustrated. Wonders in the deep. I'm not for time's sake going to go back and read it all. But it comes on the heels, verse 25. After the wonders. After the business and great waters. You want all of that? Next verse. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind. Which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. The Holy Ghost is in someone's inbox right now. They reel to and fro. And stagger like a drunken man. And are at their wit's end. But I wanted the wonders. But I, I'm, I'm wanting business in great waters, Brother Ishmael. But, uh, but we're reaching for greater business and more territory. And furthering that dominion in the name of Jesus. But suddenly there's a stormy wind. A stormy wind. I know there's some folks here that can relate. Feel like you've been tossed around. Reeling back and forth. Staggering. At your wit's end. And the Bible says it all happens. Because he raised up a stormy wind. Stay with me for just a couple minutes if you don't mind. The stormy wind there. Is speaking, the word is a hurricane. Lord forbid, we talked about that enough this week. God bless all of our wonderful saints and friends and families that are still being impacted. God, touch them and provide for them. God, let the kingdom advance through the storm. It means a tempest, a whirlwind. So the Lord raises up a whirlwind. But I want business in great waters. But I'm called to plant a church. But I'm agitated. And I'm frustrated. And I'm uncertain about what in the world is going on. The stormy wind in Psalm 107 is the very same word translated as whirlwind in 2 Kings chapter 2. That whirlwind that we preach about and love so much about Elijah and Elisha. Man, and when we preach it, it's beautiful. When, when I talk about it, it's this perfect, glorious funnel. But friend, it was most definitely powerful. But that season of time for Elijah and Elisha was not peaceful. It wasn't peaceful, but it was powerful. And it was working something for them. That whirlwind of a season is what elevated Elijah to heaven and promoted Elisha in ministry and provided him with that mantle. The whirlwind. And there's so many scriptures for time's sake, I'm not going to go through them all, but you find in Nahum 1 and 3 where it says, The Lord has his way in the whirlwind. Job 38 verse 1 and Job 40 verse 6 both states that the Lord answered Job out 
of the whirlwind. You can read in Ezekiel chapter 1 and it says, Behold a whirlwind! Verse 4, it talks about that whirlwind. And when you get to the end of the chapter, you learn that that was the glory of the Lord. God has His way in the whirlwind. He leads, He directs through the whirlwind. It's the path used to get us where we need to go and provide us with what we need if we will rely on the Lord. It's all about learning to trust in God and not in self. I want you to see this connection. Verses 23 and 24, business in great waters, wonders in the deep, works of the Lord. You get down to verse 30. Then are they glad because they be quiet, so he bringeth them unto their desired haven. See the connection. We want it. In verses 23 and 24, we receive it in verse 30, but it takes the stormy wind and process of 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29 to get us there. I'm here to tell somebody, you are destined to do business in great waters. Man of God, woman of God, you are supposed to prophesy. We are supposed to be an apostolic church. Woo! We are supposed to operate in the spirit, anointed musicians and singers, not just giving us a canned couple songs and nice blinky light show and then a nice little sermonette that produces Christianettes. No, no. I'm talking about an apostolic church that's supposed to do business on great waters. I'm talking about an apostolic youth group that's supposed to raise up and change the world. I'm talking about campuses that's not just supposed to be a church in a community, but you are to be the church of a community. Come on, I know, I know you were riding with me a few minutes ago, but just ride with me through the whirlwind just for a moment. Here's what I feel. Here's what I feel. Verse 30, this is interesting. It says, then he brings us to the desired haven at the end. Haven, what's that word, Sister Danae? It's harbor. Souls Harbor. (laughs) Kind of fits. You see the connection there? See what I did there? (laughs) That's what we are, and that's what we're striving to be. I feel like this is what the Lord is saying. Because there are people frustrated, and you're, you're upset and you're agitated, and I'm with you in some of it. Because Souls Harbor is in transition. This is not how I like to preach. I know my style. I know everybody's got their own thing. But I'm just wading out there tonight. Souls Harbor is in transition. A transition is a moving a changing. It's a pathway. We are in transition. The Spanish church is in transition. The deaf church is in transition. The Bellevue campus is in transition. Dade City is in transition. Don Allen is in transition. When a woman is expecting a child and gets close to giving birth, she hits this horrific stage. Thank God I'll never know about it. I was there. My eyes are just this big. They call it transition. You see, she was expecting before. She was great with child before. But now something has shifted And the birth is beginning. Feel this in the spirit. And I'm telling you, Souls Harbor is in a season of transition. And this is not a day, week, nor a month. We are in a season of transition. And it's bugging the living daylights out of a few of us. Because we're looking for answers that the pastor can't give. Because we are blessed with a man of God 
and not a CEO. You want him to rattle something off, off the top of his head, but the spirit saying, not yet. If I've ever been anointed, I'm anointed in this moment, and I feel such authority right now, and I pray in the name of Jesus that every member and minister alike would get on board and continue to operate in unity with this church and with this man of God because he is leading us into greater waters, and we've got wonderful things that's going to happen. We've got campus pastors and leaders that are anointed and submitted. Ah! Something's about to change. Something is happening right now. And we can get frustrated with each other. Pastors from different campuses getting just a little agitated with each other. Ministries within the church. I think I'm preaching pretty good right now. This is what the Lord is saying right now. And we feel this craving. Greater waters, deeper ministries, more business, more territory, Brother Ishmael, greater attendance in Dunellen. All of these things that we're feeling can be just this turbulent times when suddenly transition occurs. The Lord says, you want it? You got it. And so then we load up together. In the SS Souls Harbor. And we are in a time right now, church, that we don't have all the answers. Where we have a pastor and we have leaders that respect each other and work with each other's different personalities and are patient with each other because we don't know what we're doing. You might have all of the answers, but we don't have all the answers, but we have Jesus. And he's looking for somebody. I need you guys to just come line up here with me right now. And he's looking for some people that can just stay on the boat and that can just ride through some troubled waters. I need some deaf ministry and some Spanish ministry up here. I need Brother Donnie, Sister Brandy, I need y'all up here. <laughs> I need some of you department leaders for Bellevue up here. We're in this SS Souls Harbor together. Whoever pastor says and points at, get up here. I'm going to give time for that. I feel led right now. Pastor, whatever you feel like doing. See y'all, we're in this thing together. This ain't this ain't Sister Danae's kingdom, and it's not Daniel's kingdom. This ain't Sister Lacey's kingdom. It's not the Ellis kingdom. This is the kingdom of God. And I am thankful to have people that are not trying to build their own kingdoms. We're hungry for revival. God sees the hand. Oh, the hand of the Lord. Take a minute, and if you feel led, just pray for someone. Y'all that are up here, pray for somebody up here. I ain't in a rush right now. I'm staying right here. Come on, Souls Harbor. We're going after wonders. 
We're going into some greater waters. But some of us right now, we're wondering what in the world is going on and why are we frustrated and what is happening. We're going through the whirlwind. There is a transition that's taking place and the Lord is doing it to deliver us to, to that place where we're supposed to be. If we will handle... Could you lift your hands all over this house right now? I want you to hear this. If we will handle, I feel this in the Holy Ghost and I might be wrong and Pastor Jason's my leader. He can correct this later. But I feel the Lord saying, if we can handle the next two years appropriately, The testimonies that will be shared when we're reaching 2025 is not going to be, it's not just going to be one more campus and 10 filled with the Holy Ghost. We are going to see Dunellen becoming a, Souls Harbor, becoming a mega church by the world standards. Oh, oh. We're in transition, and some of us are frustrated, and we're unsure, Brother Noah. And I'm not exactly sure what to tell you, Sister Carrie. And there are more questions than there are answers, honey. There are things that I don't know. And Pastor Jason isn't sure about. But one thing I've learned about this great man of God, when the word comes, he is going to release what thus saith the Lord. Don't be frustrated with his silence. Don't be agitated because he ain't giving you a cute little word. He's not just spouting off his opinions. When he speaks, he's speaking as the oracle of the Lord. You want somebody to give, give you some canned counsel? Leave this church and get out of here. We are not going to have a divided church with a bunch of little ships where in a year or two, we're all going to go autonomous. The devil is a liar. God is birthing a new thing. We are on the verge of a family of pastors, a network of organized churches beyond the state of Florida. Not three, not five, not 10, not 20. Lay hands on somebody right now.
Come on, don't stand around gazing right now. Turn around and lay your hands on somebody right now. I wish we would flood these altars. I still have something to say in a minute, but right now, let the Holy Ghost move. Push up, young people. Push up, young people. Stop clogging the aisles. Bring them forward. Bring them forward. Come on, come forward. All the way up. All the way up. Come on, stop building your own ship and get on board with Souls Harbor. Stop planning your exit route. Stop trying to abandon ship and get with the plan. Get with the program. Souls Harbor is going places. It's going to be wonderful, my friend. It's going to be powerful, Sister Liz. It's beyond what we can imagine. Just stay on board. Stay on board. Stay with us through the whirlwind. Jesus. Come on, some of you, it's time to activate in the ministry. It's time to get involved. It's time to go to another level. Come on, members of Souls Harbor, whatever campus you call home, it's time to ride, honey. It's time to ride, honey. It's time to go into those deeper waters. I know we've been frustrated. I know we're rocking here and fro, and I know it's kind of getting a little agitating, but just hang on, honey. We're going to a haven. We're going deeper. We're going to have miracle signs and wonders. Come on, Austin Wicker. Come out from among the stuff. Stand up and be counted, young man of God. Bring some of them up here. Bring them on this platform. Oh! Get him up here. Lay hands on him. The Lord's calling you up, Austin. The Lord's calling you up. It's not me. Come on, the Lord is elevating some of you. The Lord is positioning some of you. Elisha, you wanted the mantle. We're entering into that time frame. The whirlwind has begun to swirl. Transition is upon us. You gotta ride. Stay with the man of God. Stay with your Elijah. Keep your spirit right. I need some seasoned saints to get up here and lay hands on some of these young people. We got to get partnered up, y'all. We got to get partnered up. Sister Melissa, Brother Darrell, I need y'all to come pray up here. Some of y'all get up here right now. Some of y'all that have weathered some storms and you've gone through some hell and chaos. I need you to get up here right now and impart some strength. The enemy would love to cause somebody to jump overboard during this. Your flesh would try to make you think that you can build your own boat, but God has already put you where you're supposed to be. Stay on board. Get with the program. Stay with your pastor. Be submitted. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
You want to travail? You want to intercede? You want to let the gifts of the Spirit start bubbling up inside of you? If you get a word for someone, you speak it in Jesus' name. Don't sit on that word. Don't sit on that prophecy. Don't sit on that word of knowledge. Give it. Hey, 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 I need some of y'all to get up on this platform with me right now. Come on, get up here, get up here. Some of y'all get up on this platform with me. I want this platform full. I want that choir law full, come on. This is SS Souls Harbor. I need some of young, young people to stop looking at me and get up here right now. I need some young Marys and some seasoned saints right now to get up here. This is SS Souls Harbor. Come on, weeklies, y'all come up here and lay hands on some of us. Feel that choir loft. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this as you're getting up here. I ain't stopping anything. We're in the whirlwind. Hold on. Hold on. Every campus represented. Every ministry up here. Come on, cram on up here. We all stinking or sweaty. It don't matter. Come on. Stop. Hear me. This makes me think of Paul being in the storm in Acts chapter 27. And they're on the boat. Hear me. And the winds start blowing. And the storm gets bad. And the word comes to Paul. The only way we're going to get there is if we stay in the ship. Stay in the ship. Some folks were thinking, well, maybe I'll, I'll just get off right here. Maybe, maybe I'll just jump overboard right here. Well, maybe this isn't the church for me. Pastor, haven't given me my title yet. I'm called, and they, they mention me at camp meeting. They do all that, and they don't see nothing about me around here at Souls Harbor. Maybe that's why, right there. I'll stop. I'll be nice. And people were saying, I got to get out of this thing. Where are you going to go, honey? Where are you going to go? And so the apostle Paul said, if you'll just stay on this ship, it's going to be all right. And they started cutting the ropes. And that's what I'm here to tell some of us right now. You need to cut some cords. I don't care if they go to another Pentecostal church. I don't care if they... They're sowing division, speaking against your leadership. The devil is a liar. Cut that cord. Cut that loss. I'm feeling a little too comfortable right now. It's dangerous. He said, cut those ropes. Cut those ropes, Souls Harbor. Stop trying to think of plan B. Well, maybe I can start my own church. I'll go to the district board. I'll go where I'm appreciated. I'll go, I'll go where I, my talents can shine. My friend, you're too anointed to jump overboard right now. We're too close because the scripture says in Acts 28, 1, that when they made it to the shoreline, which was called Malta, Malta means a refuge, and some scholars call it a place of honey. It was after the storm, when they got to the other side, they realized, this is it. 
this is what we've been waiting on. And so I prophesy to every campus that is and that is to be, if you will just ride with your bishop, if you'll just ride with your pastor, if you'll ride with the campuses, I know you might not get your way, you might not get a position or a title for years, but if you'll just stay on board, it's going to be better than we could ever imagine. I want you to lay hands on each other right now. Come on. We ain't jumping out. We're not jumping off. That's it. Pull together. We're transitioning. We're entering into a new season. See, la la mahara na mataya la la mohosha. Se le 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 keta yo la 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 yo la 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 mona morosa. I ain't going anywhere. I'm not going to try to twist the pastor's arm. I'm not going to convince him I'm an evangelist. I'm not going to convince him that why I should leave or why I should get the solo. I'm just going to ride. I'm going to ride. There's room in the altar now. There's room in the altar. Come forward if you don't mind. Make some room for some more folks. Oh! Pastor Varnum, Pastor Jason, would you and Sister Holly come stand right here? Come stand right here. Uh, I need our, our campus leaders to come gather around them. Those that help lead in Dunellen, Sister Lacey, Brother Trey, Sister Liz, Ellis's, y'all come up and represent your, your son and daughter, please. Brother Chad and Sister Rita, Brother Ishmael, Brother Donald and Sister Brandy, Sister Danae, Sister Jenny, come on. Anybody else? Sister Brandy. This is our, our core pastoral family represented here. And this is a drop in the bucket yes. to what God is trying to do. Pastor, I don't have an answer for you, but I, don't, and I, I know we're going to have to figure out how to do business on a greater scale. The Lord's going to help us organize this thing. The Lord's going to help us. But the main thing is if those of us right here We'll just stay locked in. Not going, he's getting on my nerves. If that man don't give me a word by next Sunday, peace out, Cub Scout. No! I'm in this thing. And I'm with you. This is us. This is us. I want every hand stretched towards this, this man of God and this leadership team. And I feel a word from the Lord for Pastor Jason. I feel it right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord has not limited you. So do not let some man harness you. Do not let some man or some entity pressure you into stopping what God has started. Come on, I want you to tell him, go, go. We're with you. We're with you. We're going with you. We're going to heaven together. We're starting churches together. We're advancing the kingdom together. Now lay hands on us.
Once you are prayed for by Pastor Varnum, I want you to hit this altar and begin laying hands on these people. Did Pastor Jason pray for you? If Pastor Jason laid hands on you, I want you to start moving and praying. Start laying hands. If Sister Holly, if Sister Varnum, if Bishop Varnum touches you for a split second, I want you to take that mantle and begin to operate in it. Lay hands on people. Sister Danae, God's got you, Brother Donald and Sister Brandy. No worry, God's gonna get us where we need to go. Go pray for people now. Oh, say that I run the mercy. Oh. I need this leadership team now to hit these altars. If you want to be in the will of God, if you are in unity with this church, I'm not talking about a campus. I'm talking about Souls Harbor. If you are in unity with that, I want you to ask one of these leaders to pray for you right now. It don't have to be me. It don't have to be pastor. They speak on behalf of their man of God. They are in submission. They are in unity. They are in the hand of God. Come on, lay hands on one another. Get in unity with, with the church. There's an anointing here. Come on, Elisha. Stick with Elijah. That's it, Elisha. Ride with Elijah. We need some young men and women of God to get in line with these campuses. Pastor Jason will not have the ability to counsel each and every one of you, but the Lord will place an appointed and anointed leader that is placed by pastor in your life. That's it, Brother Max. That's it, Sister Ashley. Come on, there's impartation here. You're not finished. You're not overlooked.
is calling you. The Lord is bringing you up. Lay hands on my daughter right there. Lay hands on the children of our leadership. Lay hands on your children right now. They could be a missionary. Souls Harbor is going beyond Florida. I know we have somebody in Alaska. I know there's someone in Thailand, but the day is coming when there's gonna be other missionaries that have their home here. Stay in the boat. Come on, it's happening. Come on, it's happening. Callings are being released right now. People are stepping into the will of God. Someone right now is getting in line with the will of God. Come on, say yes, Andrew. Say yes to the Lord. Come on, some of you campus and department leaders begin to lay hands on people from your groups right now. I need somebody to lay hands on Brother Christian and Sister Melena right there. Red shirt, he's holding the baby. I want you guys to know that the Lord brought you to Souls Harbor. I know others are speaking against it. I know there'd be others that would try to talk against it, but the Lord has brought you together and the Lord has brought you to this place. You will be a strength, you will be a voice, and there is an anointing that will be released through you for that Dunellen campus. Come on. Some of you that's been converted in the last couple years, you're not too late to the party. You haven't missed out. There's anointings available for you. Oh, come on, T and Julie. You're in the hand of God. You're in the will of God. Oh, stay submitted. Stay spiritual. Come on, Sister Shay. Yeah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's continue right now in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a word we have heard. What direction we have received. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, just keep praying, but I want to say this, that I know, I know what it is like to be in services just like this. These kind of messages, Souls Harbor is no stranger to them. We are no stranger to messages with complete direction and, and, and point, God showing us exactly what to do and how to do it, but but. Quickly after the altar call, what comes to my mind or what comes to your mind is where do we go from here? Great word. Great word. All I can think of as I'm up here praying back and forth is prayer and fasting. You've got the word. You've got the direction. But what do I do from here? I pray and I fast. And 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 the more we get a corporate direction, we take that and we internalize it. And individually, we pray and we fast. Young people, teenagers, we need people who are learning to pray and fast daily reaching for the Lord, taking what is being delivered over the pulpit in messages like this. And we are praying and fasting. And what happens is God takes this corporate word. And when we begin to add our own devotion and consecration and faith to it, he begins to personalize it for us. It begins to be my effort and my work. Don't allow yourself to get frustrated. Brother Stone King always used to preach in all of these singles conferences years ago that he used to do and all these different things. And he would talk about and he'd say that uh, motivation without direction breeds frustration. We get what we need. We get the word. Oh, we're so ready to go out and do it. But then I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do. Pray and fast. Pray and fast. Are you praying? Are you fasting? Are you praying this week? When will you, when will you take this message and water it with prayer? When will you fast next about this message? It is now up to us, Souls Harbor. Souls Harbor collectively, but it's also Souls Harbor individually. Let's worship the Lord right now. Let's take this word right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Help us. Help us, help us. We need young people that learn to pray and fast. Not just the whole youth group where you can check in or check out, but you've got to do it. Young adults, we've got to pray and fast. We're dependent on you. Young marrieds, we're dependent on you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, families, pray and fast. Pray and fast. Pray and fast. And let's make this word come alive. told Pastor Daniel that I felt a spirit of a prophet on him. And we didn't even understand. Paul made it very clear that we did not come with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. And if we think we are going to do what God wants us to do by our abilities, we are fooling ourselves. We need men of God young and old, to step up and speak what thus saith the word of the Lord. Aren't you thankful for the word from God that we have received? The word from God. In the name of Jesus. And everything he says, I concur with. Not because there's some faction that's trying to do something. But what he was doing and what I have done is you have another level that you're looking the bible talks about it, the watchman on the wall and if you think we are going to accomplish the things we are accomplishing without the devil 
trying to get in there and sow tares among the wheat. You are crazy. The attitude that you won't get over is of the devil. Oh, I just want to hang on to it. It's of the devil. You need to repent and you need to get over it because this church is moving somewhere. I'm going to say it again. Your attitude is of the devil. You buck up against me and we'll go again. That little spirit that you're letting get in your home and you're letting rise up in your kids is of the devil. The Bible says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and their spirits that would love to rise up. But when the church stands together, it gives no room for the enemy to sow his tares. I'm asking the church, be on alert, pay attention, be sober, be vigilant. That man spoke as a prophet. And the things that he was talking about are the things that will be if you don't get your spirit in check. There's too much going on in this place right now. Lift your hands. I need to stop because you need to digest what you've received. You don't need any more. We bind every trick of the enemy and we go to the deep and we brave the waters and we fast and we pray. Jesus. Jesus. Pastor Donnie, Pastor Daniel, we're absolutely right. With what's going on here, so people are going to have to get hold of God. There's prayer, fasting that must go along with this. The Holy Ghost is moving. It's what Jesus was led. One scripture said, driven. After he was filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has filled us. Now where will you let the Spirit drive you? Where would you let the Spirit lead you? Because that's going to be how on the other side... On the other side of the wilderness is when he came out in the power of the Holy Ghost. He went in, but he came. Oh, my God. The Holy Ghost is trying to help some people to stop going in your cycle of breakthrough, same thing. Breakthrough, same thing. Breakthrough. Come on. The Holy Ghost is trying to help you. There's too much anointing here right now. I'm trying to stop, but I can't. In the name of Jesus, receive the word. Hold on to this word. Walk in it. Thank you, Pastor Daniel, for preaching what thus saith the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love this amazing church. You know, I'm going to have to start going through standards earlier in the year. I have did it in September for so long. I, in my mind, I've always called it separation September because that's when I was talking about it. But school's starting earlier, and then all of these things keep happening. So we're going to go into it. If, I, if it takes me to the end of the year, we're going to go through it all. But we'll, next year, we'll do it earlier. But this week, the reason I'm saying that is Wednesday, we won't have church here. Because General Conference is a wonderful thing. Most of the time, it's in another state. You don't get the opportunity to go and be a part of it. So it's here in Florida. Take the extra effort. Be a part of it. Find out what it's like to be a part of the body of Christ. People will be here from all over the world. It would be a good thing for you to be a part of at least one of those services, if not multiple of them. Anything else need to be said or done? Outreach the 22nd. Vision review. We have not been talking about it, but you'll get some information coming. It's October 16th, and that's for all those that are in um, in, that you serve in this church. It'll be after a Sunday night and we'll be together. Danae, when do you leave? Wednesday. Some people get around Danae. Who else is going with you? Kara, raise your hand. Kara, where you at? I can't see. I can't find you. 
Oh, man, I'm sorry, Kara. Kara, who else? Autumn, Angel, who else? Rachel Freitas, where you at? There you are. Here's some more. Then they want you come with them. It looks like they're all over here. Thank you, Lord. They are all heading, well, some of them are heading to different places. And they's going to be in both Thailand and in uh, South Korea. Is that correct? And she's leaving Wednesday. And some of these girls are going with the first side of the trip. Some of them are going to the other side. Lay hands on them and let's pray a protection over them. God, I pray, God, that you will cover them, watch over them. I pray that the angel of the Lord will lead them. God, they are not going, God, just to go through a trip. They are going to be used by you. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. Each and every one of them, let them lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Let blind eyes open when they lay hands on them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let miracle signs and wonders take place. God put words in Sister Danae's mouth. Let her speak with clarity. In the name of Jesus, go beyond barriers of language. Go beyond barriers of culture and let an apostolic anointing flow through her. God, let her speak as a prophetess in the name of the Lord Lord Jesus. Let it happen in Jesus' name. Let's thank the Lord for it in advance. In Jesus' name. I love this amazing church. We'll be back here on Sunday. But through the week, if you're here and you're not at General Conference, as always, come by, pray. That prayer room should not grow silent. Let it always have a voice praying in the name of Jesus. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Brother Mahalan, where are you? Thank you. Let's go ahead and go right here. I know we're late. We'll talk in just a moment. Thank you so much. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Is Brother Wicker here? Mike Wicker's in there. Clay, can you send him this way? Where's Bishop? Bishop.